Uh, my name is Corwin Bruce, and I will be talking about getting started with Emacs today. I have been an Emacs user for a long time. First of all, thanks and a huge welcome to the conference um, uh, from me and uh, and 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 on behalf and and back to the other people that have been helping to organize. It's been amazing just to be involved with uh, with that and just kind of see backstage. So I've used a lot of different editors um, in my time. Uh, I'm about 25 years as a professional software engineer. And uh, in most of that time I've been using Emacs. I'll talk a little bit in a minute if I can ever find my slides with uh, how I got into Emacs. But I think if you've used Emacs and a lot of other editors for a long time, something that you notice right away is that you get good with it in a way that stays meaningful. You learn new things, those things sting with, stick with you, and you learn how to um, how to how to make it do new tricks and then keep keep doing those tricks uh i do want to mention that this conference isn't about how to or this <laughs> this talk isn't about how to uh adjust your configuration specifically i don't have a bunch of code samples in here there are other great talks at the conference particularly andrews um that i looked at that looked like they might be more aimed at that. Hey, I'm just getting started with Emacs. What what are some things to try to make it more comfortable for me starting? This is about how to think about the problem space more. So hopefully a good warm up as we start thinking about some of the lightning talks a little later on. And I'm just going to quickly make sure I can see my IRC buffer in case I run into time. I didn't get my stopwatch started for this one. So all right, let's dive in. Um, we assume that we want to install packages and maybe configure some features. This is particularly from the perspective of we're working with a bunch of people on a team and we want to get something done. Some of us probably already have mature Emacs workflows. Others are installing it for the first time. We want, um, so the first question is, you know, in that context, what's the value proposition? Why should I mess with my mature Emacs co configuration um, and impose my ideas over the way somebody else is learning Emacs? Well, it, it can be, I'm off my slides here a little bit. Um, it can be, it can be a little bit tricky to, uh, to, to learn Emacs. One thing that helps us a lot is if, people that we're working with can tell us kind of keystroke for keystroke at times what to do and explain what everything is doing. Using the same packages can, can really help us with that on a project. Um, so speaking from my personal experience, it took me decades to get to the point where I was excited to program an Emacs Lisp. I program in a lot of programming languages, but Lisp wasn't on my list. I looked at my config that I was copy pasting around from generation after generation of .emacs file or recrafting it from hand in internet searches to uh, get the things that I needed when I would quickly go install Emacs at some new job or contract and, uh, and need to be able to, to, to quickly get through that workflow that caused me to install the program. Uh, so simple you know, just little simple one-liners that uh, that got committed to memory over decades eventually became a, hey, what's going on here? And I credit Jeff Goff, my good friend, uh, who died earlier in 2020 for my lifelong love of Emacs. Uh, perhaps Eric and I will talk about that a little bit more in another talk we have uh, scheduled. But Jeff was a huge influence to us on a, in a number of ways and uh, a huge contributor to the Roku programming language, also known as Perl 6, which is very cool. So 
understanding how to make a good decision about splitting up configuration in a way to share it across people with really different uses of Emacs. That's actually a sort of a complicated topic and I wanna sort of back off and stare at it for a second. I think Emacs is about people. So that means it's about community. And community means we're gonna invite disagreement. So that disagreement isn't necessarily a roadblock to our project. In fact, it's some of the work that uh, a community project can invite us to do is to get closer to each other by inviting those disagreements and learning from them, learning from different people's styles and from how they argue and thinking about why they have that perspective and, and what technical benefits that perhaps radical point of view might carry away. Some people are really aggressive arguers and others um, are very passive and, and, and really couch their ideas in sort of distancing terms to say, well, probably this is a good idea or please double check me. Um, and those don't always necessarily indicate how certain a person is because we're different. We have different ways of communicating thing, ideas like certainty or uh, excitement. So when we think about a bunch of really diverse programmers approaching Emacs, probably one of our, our first really big um, challenges is just to, just to pick, um, pick what we're going to go after. There are a lot of existing, uh, you know, sort of kit installs and things like this on, uh, but my argument is, um, you could actually get pretty far just trading files around and maybe the more valuable um, the more valuable conversation to have is uh, making the hard decisions about, well, should we have vertical completion as a team? Should that be the out of the box and the people that want the traditional uh, splayed out over a single line completion, for example, in the mode line? Those people are going to add a line of config to their to their own uh, to their own setup. Uh, the way to get there, I mean, how do we find out what works? We don't want to slow down the people that are super productive with Emacs by asking them to completely break their workflows and make it easier for new folks. At the same time, we do want to make sure those new people are excited by Emacs and that turned off by having to learn the entire jungle of Emacs history in the form of its unique uh, technical stylings for things like frames, uh, buffers, and, and other unique you know, Emacs viewpoints on important interface concepts especially. The encouragement here is to use uh, trying to put the initialization for a project to team together as a crucible rather than necessarily following our defaults of um, of of finding the simplest configuration that generally works and letting people customize it. What if we tried to look for fairly specific configurations that we'll expect essentially all of our developers to be using? at least when they submit bug reports. Uh, in particular with this, I think um, that degree of experimentation can drive back into the Emacs development process. In the development mailing list, we, uh, and I'm hoping I'll get a timing cue here, <laughs> uh, will, um, in the context of Emacs development as a greater entity, we see some of these struggles. Should we change this default? Some, you are now sometimes we can have the sense that defaults in Emacs will never change. The conversation is too difficult. I think one thing that can help us get there is evidence that says, hey, my 35 or 40 person project is using this set of bindings. And, and here's, here's what we learned about brand new Emacs users trying to come in and get work done uh, with that. And that might be, hey, yeah. thanks. Hey, yeah, you still have a couple more minutes.
Oh, beautiful. Okay, great. I will try to get through my last few slides that I cut them in my last walkthrough, but I think I'm going quicker today. Thank you, Amen. Thank you. So let's so let's just recap real, real quick. In theory, Emacs works out of the box. That means we're freer to eat, free to experiment, and we can kind of throw it all away and start over. Um, as an organizational principle, we um, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking on that slide. Excuse me. <laughs> Uh, bringing it back around to the to the to the free and open source software community, we our goal is to in is to enable users to unlock their computers to do as much with them as possible. That's the context to take with a, a project initialization. But sometimes it could make sense to put um, to put some gloves on. I've thrown up on the screen here just a couple of other ideas, ways to maybe think outside of the box uh, as you're putting together project nets. But my word of encouragement is experiment with it. Try different things um, and think really specifically about how different the development users uh, might be from each other as you define standards for configuring the user environment of Emacs specifically for developing uh, on a project. That's, that's pretty much my talk. If there's any time, I would take a couple questions. Um, thank you for your awesome talk, Corbin. Um, I think we have like one or two minutes for a few questions. Do you have the pad open, or would you like me to read the questions for you? I am just, oh, I managed to uh, close the pad, and I am trying to open it again. All right, there it opened. Okay. Bring okay. Bringing it onto a screen where I can see it. Um, yeah, will you read me the first question while I drag windows around, please? Sure. It says, um, do you use Emacs as a community building tool? Do I use Emacs as a community building tool, or how do I? <laughs> Uh, it just says, do you? Yes, absolutely. I think Emacs is an ambassador to uh, to the GNU tool chain. I think that it, the, in the fullness of time, we will see an Emacs that is that makes uh, that makes iOS and Android and other closed source tools. Uh, dream. That's why they mock us and call Emacs an operating system. It's because it could be if we cared for it to be. It's quite a threatening product from a from a uh, from the perspective of how many problem spaces it can address, how many types of users it can satisfy, and uh, the things that we can do to make it robust in those environments. I mean, obviously, we're always thinking about the weak points, but is Emacs a community building tool? Heck yeah. Um, there's like one or two more questions. Um, I think they're more long form, so it might be better to, um, if you took them off stream so you could like keep the schedule on time. I would love to take those questions offline and I will respond to you in writing if we don't get to it in a breakout room. Thanks so much for joining us and I can't wait to see the rest of the conference. See you there. Awesome. Thank you again so much, Corbin.